Hello up the mountain, my name is Camilla Augustus and welcome back. Joining us for today's interview are our 11th and 12th grade counselors, Ms. Christy Wade and Mr. Bobby Devers. I had a great time chatting with them and I'm sure you guys will too. Enjoy. Hi guys. Hi Camilla, how Hi. are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Doing fine, doing fine. Thank you. Good, good. So just jumping right Don't into the interview. Hi, did you hear? <laughs> yes. So just jumping right into the interview, could you guys tell me a little bit about yourself outside of school? Mr. Davers, you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> hey, Sophie. Um, so um, married uh, for 19 years now, have a 18-year-old senior at Vestavia High School, Vestavia Hills High School, and uh, so we live in Vestavia. Um, I have a 31-year-old stepson who just got married last October. They just celebrated their one-year anniversary. Uh, we have a little doggy, Sammy, who's laying here at my feet. Um, my wife is a teacher as well. She uh, teaches fourth grade uh, reading and so English language arts and history at um, Spring Valley School over in Birmingham off Lakeshore Drive. So house full of educators. So son has no chance at all or has not had a chance <laughs> in all of his schooling days. <laughs> Miss Wade? Oh, I guess it's my turn. Okay. Well, um, I have a few years on Mr. Devers. This is year 31 in education. And I think this is about my 12th year at Oak Mountain High School. I taught high school many, many, many years ago. Um, then I did middle school counseling, elementary school counseling, now high school counseling. But for um, in most cases, I've been in school since I was five. So that's a long, long, long time. Uh, I have been married this December will be 30 years. So I'm very um, blessed to be married to my best friend and we celebrate 30 years this coming December. We have two, I guess I can say children. Um, one turns 25 this month and he's in law school at Cumberland and our daughter's a senior at South Alabama about to be off the payroll once she finishes that nursing degree. Um, in May. So, and as you guys already saw, I'm a dog mom. And um, just for, um, you know, just some of the history, I'm not a dog lover, never have been. I'm, I'm not mean to animals in any sense of the <laughs> imagination, but she came into our life about six years ago and she has stolen our heart. So I've kind of done a 180. So now I'm one of those people who lets the dog, you know, in the house, in the bed, you know, take snaps with, okay, whatever. <laughs> Nibble off your plate. <laughs> yeah. oh. That's the husband. <laughs> he does that. He lets her do that. <laughs> so you guys are both saying you have children. I'm sure they're very, very lucky to have you all as parents, considering that you um, are very heavily involved in the <laughs> college application process. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know if he considers himself lucky. Um, he, um, he, it's been a kind of a, a fun adventure to go through it with, with him. Um, uh, thankfully he's, well, I won't say thankfully, you know, with the COVID issue kind of been limited in our ability to make it to campuses. Uh, but, you know, of course being in Alabama made treks to football games throughout all of, um, his childhood and, um, um, he's really interested in going to Alabama, really interested in going to Mississippi State. So, uh, you know, now it's the fun time of parenting of trying to pay for that on an educator's budget. So, you know, kind of in the same boat as all the other students and, and parents that are seniors, just trying to navigate the admissions process, the financial aid process. The, you know, we need scholarships uh, process <laughs> as well. So, yeah, kind of walking through it with you guys. Nice. So I'm not, uh, I'm not so sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Camilla. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. I was just, oh, I didn't know if I was supposed to answer the same question. <laughs> Maybe you can edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can, you can answer the question. <laughs> oh, well, 
I was just going to say, I, it's, been, it's been nice that Mr. Devers is going through it once again because it's amazing what you forget. But I guess where both of my personal children um, are at the moment, um, it's reminded me how, what, a, what a privilege it is to be on this side of things with students making their decisions of what their next steps are, whether it's four-year college, two-year college, the military, some sort of technical training. Um, they're just, you know, kind of beginning to get their feet wet on that next steps. Um, and I'm kind of on the other side of it as a parent, beginning to see them realize the fruits of their labor, if you will. Um, as said earlier, I was excited about getting one off the payroll and the other one off in another year and a half. But it's been kind of, it's been a neat journey watching them, you know, begin to, to um, realize that in just a few short months they will be you know hopefully gainfully employed and all that hard work things that they were thinking about wanting to do when they were seniors like yourself um is is coming to fruition <laughs> yes so what are some of your hobbies outside of school well for myself i i have a couple of uh, part-time jobs <laughs> that are also kind of hobbies and passions of mine so i uh, officiate both football and uh, basketball, uh, high school football, and then um, high school and college uh, basketball. So they're kind of hobbies, but they're also kind of uh, fun passions that I have. But if I'm just like having fun, it asks me what I just want to do on a Saturday. It's probably um, when I'm not, you know, wanting to spend time with my wife and family, <laughs> then <laughs> I'm going to uh, go fishing. Um, I love to fish, uh, saltwater, freshwater, you know, just sitting on a boat somewhere and not very good at it. I mean, I like to, I guess that's why they call it fishing and not catching. So I just like going and, and uh, trying to, trying to solve that problem of catching fish. Where's your favorite fishing spot? I like to go to Garnersville up in, um, well, in Garnersville, but also I, you can get there through um, the Fort Payne area. Uh, there's, Certain just drive up there. It's usually, you know, getting up at 4.30 a.m. to try to be there by 6.30 or 7, um, which the getting up part is not fun, but, you know, catch you. I have a buddy that has a boat, so I just, you know, <laughs> let him drive and I'll sleep a little bit <laughs> on the way up there. So, but that's our favorite place to go. And we go, you know, it's probably not the best time of the year to go when we go. We just like to say we go when our wives let us go, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you uh, did basketball as well? I do. I've uh, been officiating high school sports since 1995. So, you know, I was just out of college. Um, and I, I can talk about that, you know, all day long. But, yeah, I, st I st uh, started when I was young and um, dumb, you know, just letting people just yell crazy stuff at me and then I just got married so you know just let that continue <laughs> uh, so yeah I've been fishing basketball that long and um, and then I just picked up football here in the last five or ten years I've always wanted to officiate football but um, just got late started doing it so I love it yeah that's fun that's really cool Miss Wade well, <clears throat> I am not a fisher woman. Um, <laughs> evidently, like Mr. Deaver said, you have to, it's the um, fishing part, not the catching part, which also alludes to the need to have patience. And that's not my greatest virtue, but I do love being outdoors. Uh, we have a runabout boat that we get behind and we ski and we tube. Um, we love going to the lake. I don't officiate football, but I love watching football. Um, I love getting any pinned up frustrations out by yelling at the referees on the television. So um, I'm the opposite of Mr. Devers. I'd be the one doing the yelling and the, uh, uh, probably talking in the boat and they would probably have already pushed me overboard because, you know, you got. I think you're supposed to be quiet when you're fishing. I don't know why I fish out of ears, um, but whatever. Um, but anything we can do outside, we, we ride our bikes, we like to hike. I used to enjoy running until I turned 50 and the knees are not real good anymore. So I do what I call wogging, which is a cross between walk, jog, walk, jog. But anything we can do outside is, is where you'll usually find us, myself and my family. 
Nice. Now, here's so a treat to watch Miss Wade uh, cut her grass too. Yeah. <laughs> I like you enjoy to work with the lawnmower. If anybody, <laughs> yes, it, it's good aerobic activity, especially if you run with it. And I have a kind of an incline, so I run up the hill, then I run down the hill, and I run. And um, we live in the Oak Mountain community, so I'm sure a couple of our students have seen that um, that art that I display. You know, we in the uh, front yard and so they stop and wave and probably just laugh and probably think some really interesting things. Hopefully they don't say them out loud. <laughs> hey, you're getting your exercise in. So that's good. <laughs> so what, uh, when did you guys start working at Oak Mountain High School as a counselor? Uh, I started in August, no, July of 2011. Um, so I've been, I guess this would be my 10th year, um, uh, had the opportunity to come in August of 2010 and, uh, had accepted the job and then changed my mind <laughs> and uh, thankfully, uh, they gave me another opportunity the next year to come. So kind of a funny story. Don't <laughs> tell that. Dr. Sayers. <laughs> Don't tell Dr. Sayers about that. <laughs> It's not that funny. You know, he turned us down. I'm just shocked he got a second chance. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're thankful. <laughs> Miss Wade? When did you start, Miss Wade? Um, I believe I was about three years, I guess, 2000, the 2008-2009 school year. I just, I walked across the parking lot. I've been at the intermediate school for uh, close to six or seven years. Um, like I said, with this being year 31, you begin to lose count where all the different places you've kind of landed. But I think this is the longest I've been in one place. I know it is for Mr. Deavers. Um, <laughs> I used to, I used to change about every six years. Uh, but, um, I'm kind of staying put right now until Mr. Wade lets me retire to the lake. <laughs> and yeah, I'll change about it. I changed about every four to five. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. You got a nice variety of different things. Yes. That's, yes. that's nice. <laughs> and Ms. Wade, how was the transition from uh, the intermediate school to the high school? Um, it was a little bit of a learning curve, but like I mentioned earlier, I taught high school for six years and it sort of was like coming full circle. The neat thing about going, like I said, across the parking lot from the intermediate school to the high school is for um, a, a, range of, a, a range of years, I had the opportunity to see the students I worked with in fourth and fifth grade. And although they kind of camped out sixth through eighth at the middle, I got to see them transition into the high school and all the way to their senior year. So that, that was really, um, not that it isn't as, you know, it, it, not that it isn't fun right now, but that was probably some of the most rewarding years of my career from, again, watching, knowing them since they were nine and then watching them walk across the stage at 18. That, that, that's been pretty cool. I can imagine. What um, what class did you teach before? You said you were a teacher? Uh, I taught in social sciences. Everything from government, econ, uh, uh, AP. Um, it's kind of funny. We in ninth grade, you took a semester of Alabama history and a semester of world geography. That was the state of Alabama's curriculum. So that was kind of funny um, that we that we have changed that much over the course of the years. But um, I kind of agree with what we do it now a bit better than back in the day was in the classroom. Nice. So what made you all but want to become counselors? I don't know if there was a ever I want to become a school counselor. Um, <laughs> um, it just kind of, uh, <laughs> just kind of uh, how life uh, brought me and just the just God directed the path uh, to this uh, to the position. Um, because when I was in 
college, you know, when I first went to college, you know, I wanted to make money. So I <laughs> wanted to go into finance, but I also liked sports. And so one of my, um, uh, I qualified for work study through financial aid. So one of my campus jobs was working in the intramural department at the, at the University of Montevallo, which required me to officiate sports. Uh, but through that, you know, there's, uh, you know, you have higher ed administration. So you can go into intramurals, you can go to student development, um, uh, student activities, uh, fraternity sororities, being over all of that kind of stuff, student government. So there's a counseling side in student development and higher education. There's school counseling, there's agency counseling. So the route I took was student development and higher education, which led to a job uh, with a program called Upward Bound that works with low-income, first-generation um, uh, college students. So these are high school students whose parents fell within a certain income and whose parents had never gone to college or never graduated from college, so started working, doing uh, programming with them, tutoring, that kind of stuff, which uh, then led to <laughs> admissions work where mm -hmm. I, you know, I was a re recruiter with uh, UAB for several years and... Um, Sanford in the School of Pharmacy for a year and then I got married and my wife's like you're not traveling anymore so we, we need to find something else for you and um, so I was interviewing that summer and um, interviewed at uh, a middle school Bragg Middle School I think over in the Penson area and they were like and you sound like a great candidate but you, you probably you're a great candidate for high school did you know that uh, sorry do you need to you got a tutoring session? Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll be done. Uh, so when, um, so I just went out of that interview, took a left up the highway and headed up to my old school, Aniana High School, and uh, you know, was talking to them like, you need to interview, you need to apply an interview. So I did and um, ended up getting the job as a school counselor at my old high school. And I worked there for three years. Then I went to Thompson for five years. <laughs> then I came to Oak Mountain and uh, now kind of been here for a while. So, so quite kind the of the roundabout way. <laughs> yes, quite the <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to have you though. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Miss Wade. Um, well, I'm, I'm not exactly sure when I decided I wanted to be a counselor. Um, I, I know I entered, I went to Sanford University, um, had a, a little bit of a leader scholarship, some academic scholarships, and a music scholarship. Thought I might want to do something in music. Uh, turned out that I learned pretty quickly that I enjoyed music more as an outlet and not so much as a career. Um, so it's more of a hobby, not, not necessarily a career path. Um, but about the, toward the end of my senior year, my, with my, my parents actually went through a divorce and um, my mom thought it would be really important that we kind of go talk to a counselor. And, um, you know, I originally was reluctant and I said, I'm fine. I don't need to go. You know, there's, uh, I'm good. You know, I'm about to go off to college, whatever. Um, but I wouldn't say that, that experience was prop, that experience was probably, um, what what planted that seed if you would and i knew if i was going to pursue that i was going to pursue that in a school setting that that was where i was feeling that pull that tug kind of like mr deaver said you know i just felt like god was beginning to open up the doors and show me you know that path so it wasn't necessarily this epiphany it was more of okay little bit by little bit at that time in the state of alabama you had to teach three years in the classroom before you could go into school counseling so during those three years i started working on my master's in school counseling so once i uh, finished that up i you know I, well, actually, that probably took a little bit longer than I planned because I had a baby in the midst of all that. But um, right after I finished that master's, I was in a middle, middle school setting. Like I said earlier, um, kind of been at all grade levels. I've had preschool through 12th grade. So I don't think there's a grade I missed um, as far as being a counselor for 
Um, I don't think you could pay me a million dollars and I would ever go back to seventh grade. I hated seventh grade when I was in it and I wasn't too fond of it when I got to counsel them. There's like multiple personalities in each body of seventh grader. Um, but most every stop that I had along the way taught me a little bit about why um, I guess I had had some experiences in my own life and how I could use those experiences, you know, to, to help, help students through, through their own experiences. That's good. So speaking of helping students, um, what do you love most about counseling your 11th and 12th grade students? I love the drug. It's real. I mean, you know, it, you know, you guys are, you have so many things that, that draws your interest and so many things that, um, um, that can overwhelm you. Uh, but, you know, the majority will get in there and you'll um, work through it. You'll, you know, battle whatever it is that's um, the thing that you're dealing with. And, and you, you know, 99.9% are going to come out on the other side, you know, ready to take on the world and, you know, move on to college, military, um, you know, straight to work, whatever it is, you know, prepared to, to take on life. So, you know, uh, that's what I enjoy the most is just kind of um, facilitating the, the thought processes of, you know, when they come in or, you know, someone's you know, really upset, you know, just helping them kind of see that, you know, this isn't, this isn't the end. This is just, <laughs> just the beginning. So, um, <laughs> you know, just let's, let's work through this little, this, this situation, I won't say little, work through this situation, you know, kind of help you get to the other side and, and get through uh, whatever it is that, you know, you're struggling with. And they usually see that, you know, that they're much better off for going through the struggle and not trying to go around or over or, or bury their head <laughs> and, and not deal with it at all. That's good. Miss Wave? Um, Mr. Mr. D has a thing. They're there now. This is tough, but it's going to get tougher. Uh, there's a lot of truth in that, of course. Um, I guess my, my, my word I would use that he uses struggle is they're very synonymous. It would be the growth. Um, when you start working with 11th graders, no offense, but it's a lot. They're, they're just kind of old 10th graders. And there's still some of the, I, I, for lack of a better word, high school shenanigans. Um, the light bulb comes on more slowly for some than others. Um, but as they transition through that first semester, they begin to, I think, begin to take on a maturity. And I'm talking in generalities, of course. The majority begin to take on a maturity of, hey, you know, this, the, the, the things that I'm doing today do impact me um, for the, you know, for the the remainder of my high school years for sure. And I want to make, make better, you know, decisions about the things that are, you know, coming my way when, when school is over. So I, I guess that growth, just watching again, those realizations and um, the things they want and the plans that they have beginning to unfold and, and really just beginning to, to uncover those passions they have um, about their life in general. Nice. Um, so what are some of the most common concerns that uh, the ninth and not ninth, but the 11th and 12th graders come to you with? And what is normally your response to those concerns? Go ahead. I was going to say, we already used yours, Mr. Devers. They're there now. <laughs> Life is. Um, <laughs> I think. I think. Probably the biggest, I don't want it to sound cliche, but but it's just the stressors that they encounter. I think Mr. Devers hit upon something when he said there's a lot of distractions that enter into their world. There are more distractions than, than I could, you know, have, have ever imagined when I was in my teen years. And even though I'm 52, I do remember those years, but we didn't have to contend with some of the things that, that kids of today um you know, have to encounter. So I think those stressors that come along the way, um, I guess part of my role as a counselor is trying to help them 
strike a balance, you know, because there has to be a balance in life between your, you know, your, your work self and your, your spiritual self and your um, mental health and your emotional health and, and all that. And it has to be, it has to be, you know, not too much of one thing or not enough of one thing is not good in most any situation. We could probably hash that out all day. So just trying to help students, you know, encounter those stressors and then put them in the right perspective and, and, and hopefully strike a better balance because that, that is a skill that a student can learn at 16, at 17 and at 18, they're going to continue to learn it for the rest of their lives, but they're going to have some successes and those wins are going to help them in the future. Um, as much as probably some of the academic things that they're learning in the classroom. Yeah. And I would have to echo all that. I mean, of course, we're going to be dealing with grades all the time, um, grade issues and um, dealing with the word no. Uh, I've learned a lot of, a lot of Oak Mountain students uh, and students in general, just teenagers in general, just do not like the word no. Uh, but no is an answer. <laughs> um, um, and uh, just feelings of being overwhelmed. Um, you know, you've, you've chosen in, uh, AP this and AP that and another AP and then your elective is an AP and, and then it's hard. And yes, <laughs> yes, we know it's hard. Um, and, and, and learning not to quit, you know, again, learning to, to work through that, that struggle that um, you've made a, a, a choice and we're going to help you um, navigate the waters of the choices that, that you've made. Um, and, and so I won't say it's a whole lot, but, you know, when, you know, a student is out and they, you know, they get sick or they are, um, they miss a few days of school and then they come back and they've missed, you know, a hundred problems of this and, you know, mm -hmm. three, three or four lessons in that and a quiz in this class and a test in this class. <laughs> so, you know, they're like, you know, they become overwhelmed and, you know, we're going to cry this out a little bit, which is fine. Um, and it's okay to be overwhelmed, but you, you know, we have to learn. Um, another one of our saying, or my saying, you know, Camilla, do you know how you eat an elephant? One um, bite at a time. One bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you asked Camilla that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So you eat that elephant one bite at a time, and you know there's nothing that is unrecoverable. Um, if I can get one thing over, there's nothing. There's no situation that is 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 that you can't get through, or that we can't help you get through. You just have to be willing to, you know, again <laughs> go through the struggle you know, because life is hard sometimes, and we just that's just something we have to do. Yeah, you no guys problem. are giving. Great advice. This is like my own little counseling session. I am, <laughs> I'm like at peace right now. Thank you. <laughs> We're good. What is some counsel we like advice that you've given to a student, uh, but you've also been able to take in for yourself? Um, I mean, I think, again, when I stay pretty pretty busy. <laughs> so just remembering that, uh, and I don't know if you've ever seen my office, but it's, uh, it's unorganized chaos in there. <laughs> and um, there's just stuff all over the place. So just remembering to, to slow down and to, um, you know, finish one job before I try to move on to, to something else. Um, that's one of my, my greatest struggles is that, you know, I have many, irons in the fire and sometimes I don't get something complete before I move on to the next thing so it's important to you know if you have a lot of stuff going on complete this one thing and then let's go complete this other thing and then go complete this next thing um, instead of just trying to you know juggle many balls at one time this way I think, again, not to sound cliche or like an old Miley Cyrus song, but um, 
is to <laughs> is to in, to to enjoy the journey. Uh, I am a task oriented person. And so whereas Mr. Deaver's office makes me itch, um, mine are in neat little piles. All my piles mean something. So if you want to come back and tell you what's in, in pretty much what's in each of those piles. Um, but even, even then is to maybe not be so focused on getting the task school is. I know teachers feel it, students te feel it, um, administrators feel it, and counselors do too. Um, but I think sometimes when you're just focused on the task, you you kind of lose the lesson that might be being taught in the moment. And so instead of just focus so much on on that, is to try to try to slow down a little bit. I am a, a little bit of a high strong type A personality that uh, yeah, Mr. Devers is, is agreeing. Um, and it's been a lifetime learning how to be still. I, I don't sit still well and I'm not still well, but, but again, that's a lesson that sometimes I find, I recognize in other people a lot, a lot more quickly than I do in myself. And so when I'm hearing myself try to encourage a student in that direction, I feel very hypocritical. And so I have to stop and go, okay, time out. This is something that, that I can take away from this, this experience as well. It's just to, to, to slow down because I'd, like I said, I think you miss a lot when you're just racing toward the finish line. Um, you miss a lot about the journey and what it has to teach you. Wow. Once again, great advice. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for coming on and taking the time out of your days to get on here and uh, just spread some good positive energy, you know, maybe calm some students in the process. You definitely got me. I'm, I'm definitely calm. <laughs> um, and yeah, and thank you all so much for all that you do. And I want you to know that you are appreciated, heavily, greatly appreciated. Um, yes. You're sweet. Hey, Thank we you, have sir. a question. We have a question for Camille. Where'd you get that really cool chair? Oh, this, this. I'm trying. Um, oh, <laughs> I think my mom ordered it offline somewhere. Do you, did it come with a cool. crown? You need a, you need a crown. <laughs> yes. Queen Camilla. Yes. It's very grand like. I like. Yes. <laughs> very royal. You're, and you're and you're very elegant, so you would you would make a good queen. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much once again, and have a nice evening. You too, you Camilla. Thank bye. You so much. See you bye. At school. Bye. bye. <laughs> See you at school. And that was Miss Christy Wade and Mr. Bobby Devers. If you're in the 11th or 12th grade and have any questions or concerns, be sure to stop by the counselor's office to check them out. Also, be sure to follow us on all of our social medias. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at OakMTN Media. And for Oak Mountain Media, I'm Camilla Augustus.